guys, it's July 1st, 2022. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and we're on our last quilt block for Heartfelt. This is block six, and so I'm gonna give you a full tutorial on how to make one of the blocks. There are five blocks for this week, and they're, it's not that hard, it's just a lot of corner squares. So if you can put a corner square on a block and do a quarter inch seam, you can definitely make this block. It's just gonna take a little bit more time than the others have. Now we're in July, I wanted to let you know in August, we're gonna have a tutorial on finishing and I'm gonna focus in that video on getting your sashing to line up correctly with your row. And so you might not wanna cut those fabrics yet. And then the month after, which is September, I'm gonna do a tutorial on the backing and the backing has a really big block in the center of it. So that'll be a lot of fun, a lot of things to look forward to. We're gonna work on block six after that, I am gonna show you some sample maker blocks, and I'm just gonna try to give you tips um, as we go. Just so you know, this is not actually live because I had a previous commitment for this Friday morning, And um, but I'm happy everybody's gonna answer your questions, I'll answer your questions, and everyone in the chat can also answer questions. So uh, please stay tuned and don't uh, click away just because I'm not actually here. Um, now we're getting to the end of our kit. So because we're getting to the end of our kit, you're gonna start seeing smaller cuts. Now what I'm gonna do is I have my design board like I always do with my letters. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first cut the A's and the B's. For the A, now I did go through, one thing I didn't say is I've already gone through to make sure I know the pattern and everything is a corner square. So there's nothing like a square in a square where I could use paper or a flying geese where I could use paper or half square triangles where I could use paper and do shortcuts. So I am going to cut the block according to the pattern exactly. And um, that's kind of what I always do is just see if there's any shortcuts or anything I would like to piece differently than the pattern. Now the first cut we need 10 six and a half inch squares. So I've got my six and a half inch ruler, six and a half by 24. Now I just put in a brand new endurance blade and I'm gonna cut two six and a half inch strips And then I'll subcut these down. And this is probably going to be a lot of cutting. So there's going to be that. Now I've got some two and a half inch squares to cut, but I am going to see what I have left over from this before I cut a strip. So I'm going to go ahead and subcut these into six and a half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut over here. Now this salvage is kind of all over the place on this one. And I think it's because of the way I starched. So see that I didn't get the salvage all the way so I need to cut more. Now I will admit there have been times I have left a salvage in my quilt. So if you've ever done that, let me know. But I know that I um, have done that several times and I'm not supposed to, but when I'm in a hurry, Sometimes I do. So this will be four. This will be eight. And then I need two more, so I'm gonna move that aside. And then I'll just have a little tiny waist from this one. So these will be my A's. Now we are going to draw lines on the wrong side of these from corner to corner, but we'll do that a little bit later. So here's my A, I'll just put it at the bottom because those were so big. So my B's, I need 22 and a half inch squares. Now to do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a five inch ruler and I'm gonna see how many, well actually I'm gonna see how many I can get from this first. So, 
I'm going to cut a two and a half. I'm going to cut another two and a half. I'm going to see how many I can get here. I got rulers everywhere. Okay, so I think I can get eight from here. And this is, I'm just getting to the end of my quilt, so I want to use up anything I can. Now, anytime you buy a kit that we cut at Fat Quarter Shop, we give you plenty of fabric so that um, you don't have to use every single section of it. You'll have a little bit left over, so I don't really have to worry about that. But there's eight. Now, at this point, I could pull from my box and pull some leftovers but I don't really want to do that because I still have this much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip now when you're cutting if you cut here I'm just saving time by cutting here basically instead of the full strip this is going to be puffy and this is going to affect your seam so I'm going to cut here cut a two and a half inch strip And then I'll save this part in my box. So we have got one, two, three, four, eight, one, two, three, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. And then from here, I will actually save this in my box just in case I need it. I probably won't. And on the finishing, I did want to remind you guys that on the finishing, I have already cut my strips, fabric A and fabric B. So I know that I've already cut my finishing because I cut those length of fabric instead of width of fabric. And we'll talk more about that in next week's video, but or next month's video. But one thing that I do is I never put a border on a quilt with the fabric and because I don't want a seam in it. Now, if my width, if I can do width of fabric because it's a small quilt, I will do that. So my fabric C's are right here. I've got five. I need to cut a six and a half by 12 and a half inch rectangle, which is actually the size of this ruler. And I'm gonna kind of see if I can get it. I think I can. Some of my other fabrics were getting down to scraps. But what I'll do here, is cut this and then I'll put these back in my box. And I'll just kind of rotate, try not to move the fabric. Now, since I've starched, it does keep your fabric together, so it's less likely to move. See how it kind of sticks together? I feel like it sticks together because I starched. So this is my fabric C. Just make sure I didn't get any salvages. And I will put that here as fabric C. And then now we're going to get into small cuts that are kind of crazy. So this next board is my D, E, F, G, and H. So this one's going to be harder. The reason it's going to be a little bit harder is, you can see I kind of cut from corners. But I'm going to try to see what I can get cut. So... My small, smallest piece is right here. So I'm gonna go cut by cut instead of trying to do anything with the fabric. The first thing I need is a six and a half inch square. So I just take a six and a half inch square ruler. I'm always using the square rulers. Um, it's something I didn't do a long time ago, but I just, I feel like it just saves me so much time using square rulers, so I love them. So this right here will be my fabric D. 
and then it's going to get interesting. We might have to cut individually. We'll see. The next one is two and a half by six and a half. So we know we're not going to, we might get it from right here. I'm going to try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two and a half by six and a half, but I'm not going to put the line right here. I'm going to make sure I have room to trim. So from here, I'm going to cut the two and a half down. Now, because I'm going through so many layers, I'm going to have to double check to make sure I really got through all the layers. I think I did. Yeah. So this is my E, so I'll label it with my E. My F, I need two two and a half inch squares. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to try to find another corner. I'm going to create a different corner. I'm going to just put some fabrics here. Basically creating another. Now you could cut these individually. It's totally up to you. This is kind of why we give you extra fabric so that you can do stuff like this. So we need two two and a half inch squares, two one and a half by four and a half inch rectangles and four one inch squares. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut five inch, two and a half, I'm gonna cut a two and a half by five. So I'm gonna just kinda cut a little chunk off. And I hope this doesn't confuse you guys too much. This is just kinda how I cut at home if it's easier for you to cut piece by piece, you definitely could do that. So basically, I'm gonna cut five inches, then two and a half inches, and these are gonna be my Fs. And the board is gonna have a lot of fabrics. When you'll see it at the end, it's gonna have a lot of fabrics, which is when it's great to use alphabetties. Now I need two one and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to try to find another corner to create. Basically creating another corner. And then when I'm done, I'm when I'm done done with the quilt. I will be able to um, cut all this up into different things for my scraps. So I'm gonna have a four and a half by three because one and a half plus one and a half is three. So I need a three by four and a half. So I'm gonna kind of cut here. And then I need four one inch squares. So I'm gonna try the one inch right here. And hopefully this will work. Hopefully I've cut enough. So here's my one inch. Now you gotta be really careful with your small pieces because you gotta keep them accurate. The smaller pieces are the harder ones. So I like to cut at the four, three, two, and one. And these are my H's. And I'll kind of sort these out in a little bit like I usually do. It's just too much cutting. From here, I need two one and a half by four and a half. So first I'm gonna cut at the three. The four and a half. And then the one and a half. So I'm basically, when I'm cutting, trying to use the least amount as possible but be as efficient as possible. So these are my G's and my I. Okay, this one's gonna get kind of funny. These pieces are my eyes. There's just a lot of them. And they're kind of getting into chunks. So we need a two, two and a half by four and a half, which would be a four and a half by five inch piece. So what I'm gonna do is on this edge, try to get that. And I totally understand if you guys think this is crazy and you want to cut piece by piece, 
you should do whatever works best for you in your um, studio, whatever makes you the most comfortable. The two that we have the least amount are these two whites. So I'll put those on top. So I need a five by four and a half. So I will do this. So five, four and a half, and I've got plenty of room to cut off this salvage. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut four and a half. Actually, I'm gonna cut five. No, I'm gonna cut four and a half first. And I'm cutting four and a half first so that I don't have the risk of having that salvage right there. So this is kind of where it gets tricky, but this is four and a half, so then I need two, two and a half. So I will start with the five, and I get questions all the time. Why do you cut the larger piece first? I learned that years ago on Simply Quilts by Alex Anderson, and there was a lady named Billy Louder, or Billy Lauder, and that's what she did, and that's kind of where I learned it. So now I have everything on my design board. But what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to put your entire block out in one section and then we'll sew kind of that way, which is a little bit different. And I'm gonna find my friction pin and we're gonna look at how it's laid out. So my C is over here. And I'm going to just make this block right here, which is block one. If I made all five blocks, we'd be here forever. And then my D and A are here. So find my D. So I'm doing it just a little bit different today than normal. And you'll see that it comes out with the same result. But this is why we put the letters on the diagrams to make it easy for you. Maybe I'll go in order of letter. Well, E, let's see. And then F, we're gonna need two of these. And so on this diagram right here, I can follow the letters. So let's see the F go here. These are going to be corner squares, so I'm going to need to make, um, I'm going to need to draw lines, and then we're going to need two eyes that go here. And usually I sort my fabrics by um, colorway. I'm just not doing that yet because now we need four of these. And anytime I'm making a block in a quilt, doesn't matter what quilt it is, I always make one block first, just to make sure that I haven't miscut anything. I mean, you know, we all make mistakes. So I would definitely um, make one block before you make all of them, especially the way I cut, because if I cut something wrong, I'll catch it on that first block and not have to rip out as many seams. Let's see, we need four Bs and then two A's. Okay, so I know on the A's, I have to draw a line on the wrong side of the A's and the B's. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And I know that just because I studied the pattern before. But this is just a slightly different way because this block is harder. When I have a block that's harder, if I put the entire block out on a design board, instead of piece by piece, it's actually helpful. So here's my A's. I'm gonna draw on my B's. And it will start, right now y'all are probably thinking, what is she doing? She's crazy. But you're gonna see in a second how it comes together and how it becomes efficient. Okay, it looks like I cut my fabric C incorrectly. I cut it at four and a half instead of six and a half. So we're gonna grab some more fabrics and fix that real quick. Um, so thankfully, Denise caught that. So I cut this wrong, but you're gonna see in a second that 
it's easy to cut more because we always give you extras in the kits. Let's see, I think I need to draw a line on the H's, which are here. It wouldn't be a live stream without a live mistake, right? Okay, so here we need six and a half by 12 and a half. Which is, I'm gonna do piece by piece probably. Okay, so we should have a six and a half by 12 and a half inch rectangle here somewhere. Yay, fits exact. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this from here. Now, because I made that mistake with these, I'm not gonna throw these away. I'm gonna put them back in my box because these pieces are big enough to save for something else. But I am gonna cut all of these. Hopefully I have enough. So there's the C. I'm getting close here. I might've messed that one up. I might have to improvise. I'll come back to that one. I'm going to do all the ones I can get easily. And then I'm just putting them on my board. Yeah, I might have cut, because I made that cut wrong, I might have a boo-boo to fix, but everything is fixable. It's just fabric after all. So yeah, so this is a mess because I cut that wrong. So what I'm gonna have to do is have those other two pieces back and I'm gonna have to make a piece that is six and a half inches wide. So, I don't really want that seam to show So let's see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just cut a piece randomly. Six and a half inches wide on both. We're gonna join them together and then cut it down. And then you'll have two pieces. So we'll kinda make this work. So I'm just gonna sew these two together real quick, sew these two together and then we'll cut it down. Now I could just buy two more pieces of fabric, but this is what you do when you make a mistake. You have to just fix it. So I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam. Do the same thing. Can I have some scissors, please? Okay, here's some scissors. So my, of course, my needle came unthreaded. And I'm just using the quarter inch guide on my machine. So we'll come
come back to building our block in two seconds. I just want to get the cutting right. So for here, because we're joining two pieces, I am going to press open so that you're less likely to see it. So it less likely will have a bump and then I'll trim it down. Now that's how you fix the mistake. Um, because I miscut wrong and it was a big piece. This is what I have to do. Now, because I'm auctioning these quilt off for Make-A-Wish, I will cut a fresh piece so that whoever buys the quilt doesn't get two pieces put together. But this is what you would do if you would make a mistake like this. You would either buy more fabric or make it work. So totally up to you. And then from here, you just trim it down to six and a half and that will go on our stack of fabric C's. But we'll fix that, like we'll really fix that before because I don't want somebody who bought a quilt to get that. Okay, so now that we fixed our mistake, we can go back to building our quilt and hopefully I haven't confused all of you. So this is our fabric C. Okay, our B's are gonna go here. And I'm gonna glue everything down once I'm done. I'm not gonna glue anything until I'm sure I've got everything in the right spot. So I've got this formed, which is here, and I'll show it to you in the instructions too. But this is just a quicker way to do a big block. Your heart is going to have H's on the, on the, these right here. So one, two, three, four. And then you're going to have F's, which I need to draw lines on real quick. Now I use a friction pen, um, you can use any marking tool you like. I like friction pen because it disappears with heat. Let's see, so here we go. This goes this way. So that looks like the heart. And then the G's are gonna go here. Now the A and the D, I'm gonna look at that to see in my instructions. You're gonna add the A later. So we're not gonna add, now you could add this now, but I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that for later. So I'm gonna leave it like this and we'll, we'll add that later. And then over here, we've got B's on the top. And then this one is gonna be added at the end. So she, we have the instructions written where you add them at the end. To be honest, you could add them now, but I'll do those at the end. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and make sure this is here. These I have correct right here. Just double checking myself. Cause you're gonna make one left and one right. And then here, this is the left, this is the right. And then you join the hearts. And then we have this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is keep everything on this board. But what I'm gonna do is glue everything down. And that's a little bit farther away from me than I would like it to be. So I'm just gonna move it because I wanna make sure I really get it where you don't see the gray from the top or the white from the bottom. So I'm gonna glue everything. Now you could use pins. This is just something new that I've been doing. And I'm doing it upside down because I really want to make sure I get it in the right spot. And then what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and do all of the stitching on the corner squares all at one time. So I want everybody to comment in the box and let me know if you have kept up with this sew along because it seems like a lot of you have kept up. 
and a lot of you have already finished. And we are currently working on our charity quilt for next year. It will also benefit Make-A-Wish. And um, all of my leftovers that I have in my box, we could make that part of, it's a standalone video as part of a live stream and show how I cut that up. So now it doesn't have to dry completely, but if I was um, doing this at home, I would let it dry just, just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the sewing machine and just sew directly on the line. Now I did wanna show you something. I was, this is something that took me a long time to learn when I first started. I used to just sew half, half, half hazardly. And if you sew too far this way, it's gonna look like this. If you sew too far on this side, it's gonna look like that. So I do try to sew directly on that line. So we're, I'm using an open toe foot, like a 1.5 stitch length, and I'm just gonna sew all of these. And what I'll do is pull them off the board, stitch, and then put them back on the board. And so you can see when you pick up that glue, if it's set there a little bit, it's gonna stay. And I'm just going to go piece by piece. So from here, I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away from the seam. So I like to use a smaller ruler doing that, just so it's easier. I feel like a bigger ruler is just too bulky. And I'll just put it right back where I got it. And I think we're, we're starting to, I'm starting to have a lot of mistakes in these live streams, and I'm so sorry guys, this is like the third one in a row. I'm not sure why I'm making so many mistakes. Maybe I'm trying to talk too much. So this is the right side of my heart. And as I'm sewing, you probably see I'm just throwing all these pieces on the floor. And that is what I do at home. I just throw them on the floor. And then once I've got a big section done, I'll pick up all my big pieces and then just vacuum. But it's just easier to throw it on the floor. Now what I'm going to do here is it's important to follow the pressing so that things nest. So I'm going to put this up here a little bit, move my iron, I'm going to go to page two. Okay, so my First step is gonna to be to set my seam about eight seconds. Press the left to the white, and I'm gonna press the second one to the red. And then I'm gonna get a clapper. Make sure there's heat on it. 
and just set the clapper right on it. Okay, these two are gonna press towards the red. And I can use that same clapper and just keep stacking. The next one, we're gonna press this one towards the red and then the other two towards the background. And you're gonna see in a little bit why, because that's gonna make them nest. Now, if you like to press open, you could also just press open and then you don't have to look at any instructions, which is sometimes why I do press open, just so I don't have to worry about not making a mistake. This one we're gonna to press towards the white and then this one towards the gray, and you'll see why this one needs to go in in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit. Now the heat from that clapper is going to make everything lie flat. So we'll bring this back over. So we've got the heart, we've got this. They we'll do these at the end. So what we're gonna do is start building this. So to build this, the easiest way is I'm gonna do these three seams at one time, press, add these two, press. So what I'll do is before I go to the machine, I will pin. I, um, most of the time I pin, the only time I don't pin is if I'm making something larger and I'm going to trim it down and I know that I'm not gonna have to worry about having anything not trimmed. So I'm gonna do these two and everything's lining up really nice. So at least my seams are lining up today. But what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put those together and you'll see that they nest. Now when you push your seam, you'll feel it and it should just nest. And then this one, if you just pull it, it kind of like locks in. So I'm gonna sew these, and I'm actually gonna just leave the board here and just sew these. I do need to move to a quarter inch foot though. Open that up. And then I'm just gonna look and it looks like everything lines up before I go press because if I needed to fix anything, I would do it here before I went to the iron. So I looked at my pressing arrows. I'm gonna set all three seams separately. And you'll notice when you see me iron versus somebody else, just other people iron, I do not move my iron a lot. It's very gentle, because I don't wanna stretch my fabric. So the outside go towards the red, the inside seam is open, and I always, whenever I, press a seam, I always press it to one side and then press open because if I don't, I usually burn myself. Because this, I do get the iron pretty hot. So. Okay, now it's wanting to act funny because I said it was getting hot. It did not like me talking to it. Okay. So 
so from here I'm gonna sew that together and this together but I'm gonna put this right sides together pin are you guys pinners or not pinners I know a lot of you guys don't pin and some of the comments I see are that I drive people crazy because I pin so much but when I'm on the channel I kind of have to do what works for me but honestly at home do whatever works for you guys like I've never on here trying to get you to do exactly what I do I'm just trying to show you what I do now here you'll see on the top it's kind of wavy compared to the bottom so as I sew I just need to pull it a little bit so that all that waviness goes away and then I'm going to put this here now just imagine if I wouldn't have caught that mistake here, we would have had a, um, a nine and a half by 12 and a half inch. And that would have been really bad. And I would have had to recut all the backgrounds. So from here, I'm gonna sew these two seams. Okay, so it's a little wavy. So I've got my first couple of stitches in, then I'm gonna pull, just like that. Okay, just a couple more seams. I think three more seams and then we'll be done. So when it's wavy like that, see how it's wavy? You don't want to put your iron on it, just like, just like that. You don't want to do that because you might get your wrinkles in. Pull it, make it flat first, and it's more likely to be less wavy. Because if you just set your iron on it, some of those wrinkles might come in. Now what I'm gonna do before I go on, I'm gonna trim a little bit on the right side. This is not something you should have to do, but I noticed that I'm a little off. So I'm gonna do that just, I'm just a little, I was just a little bit off on that. Okay, so now we're going to put these two together. And like I said, you could put your corner squares on here first and then put it together or you can do it when you're done. Either one, it's going to give you the same result and no one will know the difference because that will go in the seam allowance. So I'm going to do it according to the pattern. And right here, these seams need to line up right here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to put them down and I'm just gonna make sure right there at a quarter inch that they meet up and pin. And hopefully that, hopefully that will line up. Now right here you can see, look how I'm off a little bit. I'm off like an eighth of an inch. I'm just gonna pull this down, put a pin and hope it evens out. So you can see it's a little wavy there. I'm gonna pull. matches up somehow, luckily. So this, the pattern says to press towards the gray, so I'm gonna do that. 
and see how my top is nice and straight across because I pinned. And sometimes you do have to pull your fabric. It's not gonna come out all the time 100% accurate, even though I would love for it to. Okay, so from here, I'm not gonna use my glue here. And the reason why is because when you cut this off, you'll have a big enough piece you could save it if you wanted to. So I'm gonna sew on this line. And I don't know if I'm even going in the right order. It really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna sew on this line, directly on the line with a quarter inch, with an open toe foot. So change my foot. And when you, oh sorry, when you get that off, you wanna see, you should not see any white from the back because if you do, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fold over correctly. Trim a quarter inch seam. Then I'm gonna add that last seam. Sorry, my clapper just went clappity clap clap on the floor. Sorry. I'm having a, a rough time today for some reason. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I did wanna point out to you right here, when this is sewn, you should have created a quarter inch intersection right there. So hopefully it works. But that's why it's important to really line up on this side. If you go too far, it's gonna throw off this seam. So, sew this. cut this and before I iron what I want to show you is these pieces are big if you sewed a quarter inch seam you can get a half square triangle two of them one from each side obviously two different fabrics but you could use that for a scrap another thing you could do if you want to just save it is you can cut two and a half inch squares out of it so when I have a big piece like this I'm not going to glue it and I'll save this for our video when we're going to save fabrics at the end. Okay. Sorry. I am really um, dropping things. I'm really sorry. Yes, I need that though. <laughs> and I just put my rulers up and I need those too. Okay. So see, I've got a perfectly quarter inch foot, right? Quarter inch seam and it lines up with that seam. Now, one thing I always do is I trim my block, and that's probably the wrong word. I uh, not really trim it, I just want it to be any kind of loose ends. If I'm off anywhere, I wanna get that straight so it's easier to assemble when we get to the video that's gonna come out in August. Now, you can automatically see there's a wave. I see it before I even put that ruler down. That's gonna happen, that's part of that's part of, you know, I'm a little bit off, but when I sew that, you're not gonna hopefully notice that when we get the full quilt together. So my sewing is not always perfect either, even though I take, um, I really try to be. Okay, so this is block six. What I'm going to do is, 
This is block one, so follow my instructions. Hopefully your heart forms and hopefully you get the right side, the right side, right size. I'm so sorry I made that mistake, guys. And then you're gonna make the remaining. And then you're gonna come back in August, and in August, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you tips on sewing it together. And um, I'm going to show you, let's see, what we're gonna focus on, just so you know what to look forward to is when I come back next month, I'm gonna have all of my rows together and I'm gonna have all of my sashing cut, but I cut it length of fabric. I'm not gonna trim it down to the length though. I'm just gonna cut it and make it a little bit longer. And I'm gonna show you how to pin and how to ease it in so that your quilt comes out um, really nice and flat. I do try to pride myself on being really accurate and I don't just slap a piece of fabric on here. Some people do that and then you're gonna have a wavy quilt. Um, and it took me, I will be honest and tell you, it took me years to get this down. So I'm excited to show you that next week. And then this right here, I wanted to let you know, when we build this label, which is gonna be in September, I will put my name somewhere in here so that when we auction it off, um, you'll have that. Now I wanna show you some sample maker blocks. So if you are sewing this or haven't started and you want to, this fabric is Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea. And this is a piece from the collection. Actually, I don't know if it's a piece from the collection. So she has her five blocks done. And you'll notice in the other blocks, she had done some stitching kind of around the hearts with Aura Floss. And this time she did a vine. So you can see that vine. And this one's pretty cute because it looks like the flower hits the top of the vine. So I think that she just free, free formed embroidered these and it does look like she used six strands. So this is Sea Shore Drive, Sherry and Chelsea. And thank you to Carrie who made these blocks. Now, when we come back to our final backing video, that is when we will be able to show all of the quilts completely sewn together. And we will be auctioning off my quilt, Corey Yoder's quilt, Lisa Bonjean's quilt, and Pat Sloan's quilt. And all the money will go directly to Make-A-Wish. And Lisa Bonjean's quilt is, um, a smaller version, which is really cool. These blocks right here were made by Elva. If you've ever called customer service, you've probably talked to her. This fabric is called Flirt, and the designer is Sweetwater. And I know on this one, this background is from the collection. And then Lori made the French General blocks for us using Bon Hoor Du Jour. And they used a combination of, you know, some are reds together, some are to like, you know, the placement of the dark and the light is um, kind of, I think the hardest thing to do if you have to color it yourself. That's always what I struggle with. I don't ever struggle with the piecing, but always the coloring. So again, Lori made these from French General Fabric. And then Riley made these from One Fine Day, Bonnie and Camille. It was the last Bonnie and Camille collection. Now Camille is just designing on her own because Bonnie retired. And this one's really different than the others because it has so many colors. And then our last set of blocks is made by Deborah. The fabric is Love Note by Layla Boutique. This is one of my favorite backgrounds. I, I wish I would have bought a bolt of that before it was gone. I think it's gone. So you guys can vote and put which one of our sample maker blocks is your favorite. Carrie, Elva, Lori, Riley, or Deborah, and then that'll give them something fun to look at the comments. 
And then one thing I wanted to show you guys I'm gonna kind of show it to you on the table while we're talking about it. Is, okay, one thing that we really pride ourselves in at Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm really proud to say this, there's no other quilt shop out there that donates as much to charity as we do. And um, we do it because we care. And we wanted to really raise $100,000 this year for Make-A-Wish, which would have been our biggest raise yet but we're kind of at a stone wall. We're kind of at like 88, 89,000. So we really need to get to the hump of 100,000. So we put together our very last bonus pattern and um, Jordan's got some really pretty pictures you can see right here um, with it that are gonna pop up. But I wanted to let you know, this is a bed runner. We wanted to do something very different. So it's 40 inches by 110 inches. So it'll work on like a king or queen bed and you could put it at the end of your bed and let your doggy sleep on it so he doesn't mess up your comforter. And um, we're hoping that we can release this pattern because we're only gonna release it if we hit 100,000. So um, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so sorry I made that mistake, I feel horrible. Um, but you know what happens, but I have missed you guys today. I will be back live next Friday and please help us get to that $100,000 goal. Once we hit that goal, we will put this pattern right up and you can make it for your bed. I hope all of you have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.